Rosita Yalmini was born in Goloseca, in the province of Varese in 1931. Her family owned a clothing factory that produced nightgowns, caminos and homeware, founded in the 20s for the production of shawls and embroidered fabrics. During the Olympic Games of 1948, she met an athlete, Ottavio Missoni, known as Tai, who in addition to racing owned a small knitting workshop. The two fell in love and married in 1953. Together they opened a small knitwear business called Malificio Jolli in Gallarate. In 1958 they presented their first collection to Rinascente in Milan. Milan Sympathy thrilled fashion editors Anna Piaggi and Maria Pezzi, who decided to promote them. Stripes changed from straight to zigzag. Then the tartan, patterns and fantasies came. In 1967, Missonis were invited to show at the White Hall of Pitti Palace in Florence, where a decision from Rosita caused a sensation. She noticed the bras were showing through the tops and decided to remove them. But under the runway lighting, their outfits became transparent, and the Missonis were not invited back the following year. Soon afterwards, however, Missoni was on the covers of big-name fashion magazines. In 1969, Missonis moved into their ideal factory of Sumirago near Varese, far from the railway and from tourism, but close to nature's inspiring colours, and with a great view of their beloved mountain, Monte Rosa. Missoni became famous in Paris thanks to Elle's Claude Bruet, and in the United States thanks to Vogue, the fashion bible headed by Diana Vreeland, who about them said, these people are geniuses. A Missoni boutique was then opened in the store, Bloomingdale's. The brand gets spectacular reviews from the Women's Wear Daily, the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times. In 1973, they received the Nyman Marcus Fashion Award. From being a small local production, Missoni becomes a mega global brand. Other stores open in Italy, Germany, Japan and the Middle East. The production then extends to jewellery and accessories, the new territory of Rosita. The Milan exhibition celebrating 25 years of Missoni work is replicated in 1978 at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. Then come Missonologia in 1994 and Ottavia and Rosita Story in 1996. In the 90s, Missoni, who has always been inspired by the legacy of artists such as Chagall and Sonia Deluni, starts finding inspiration in Indian, Guatemalan and African landscapes and styles. Missoni's creations always start from three elements – colour, pattern and material. In the second half of the 90s, Rosita's and Ottavia's daughter, Angela, took over the creative direction of the fashion end, while Rosita started devoting herself to the home line. With Rosita taking control, the home collection, which until then produced especially carpets, upholstery and bed and bath fabrics, started looking at the lifestyle with a wide range of new products, from living room furniture to table sets to porcelain. The home line starts dictating trend around the world, thanks to innovative participations and prestigious collaborations such as the one with Cartel for the floral chairs, Bologna for flooring and Richard Genori for ceramics. The brand's collections are always displayed and over-photographed at Milan's furniture fairs Salone de Mobile and Fuore Salone and at the Maison et Objet in Paris. Today, Missoni's main line counts 50 stores in more than 52 countries, for a total of 390 between single brand stores, multi-brand ones and e-retailers. Missoni's fashion style grows globally thanks to the home collection by T&J Vesta, Rosita's brother's company, with its carpets inspired by distant countries and its abstract art influences, such as Claire's paintings. Missoni Home is on sale in 14 countries, with offices and showrooms in Milan, Paris, London, New York, Dusseldorf, Singapore and Hong Kong. The line is available online worldwide. Missoni designed five-star hotels in Edinburgh and Kuwait, where Rosita even adds her touch to the menus, chosen with the star chef Giorgio Locatelli, the residential project Aqua Livingstone, a hyper-modern tower built in the Philippines, brings Missoni's innovation far beyond the boundaries of fashion. On June 2, 2014, Rosita Missoni Yelmini is awarded by the Italian president Cavaliere del Lavoro, the Order of Merit for Labour. Demonstrating how to transform a local reality into a global triumph, Missoni is today considered a pillar of fashion and style, 
and an internationally recognized example of a successful company. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Teresa Maccapani Missoni, and I'm daughter of Angela, current um, designer, cre creative director of our fashion company, and Rosita's granddaughter. Before she starts her talk, I would like to make a brief introduction. In order to understand my grandmother's creative process, there are a few things you should know, especially the importance of family and the quality of life. My grandparents' normality has always refreshing, it was always refreshing and original. First of all, they decided to work in the place where they wanted to spend their weekends and remained in the countryside. Over the years, as creativity, production, and family and fame increased, they shared tasks and responsibilities. My grandfather Ottavio was more of an artist, and he was in charge of making beautiful patterns, often inspired by the colors of the nature surrounding him. While Rosita had a great passion for fashion that grew up with her and her talent. Making Missoni one of the most important and iconic fashion houses. They were an amazing close couple, with the occasional bickering and jealousy that often occurs when, you're, when you have a strong personality and when you truly love someone. They were called the Missonis, as if they were one identity, tied together by both family and work life. When they asked who was the creator, my grandfather used to say that he was, but Rosita created him. <laughs> <laughs> Their houses perfectly depict the Missoni ethos, full of light, colors, and love spacious enough to welcome and protect our ever-expanding family and friends. Rosita is well known for her hospitality, laying out large tables to eat delicious and fresh food, vegetables, chicken and eggs, grown and reared at home. Growing up in this environment was very special. She taught me and my cousins everything about the nature around us, as if it was a beautiful game. In this way, we learn how to respect and appreciate the environment, but also the harmony of colors and shape, which are endless source of inspiration. Throughout the years, my grandmother's aesthetic reflected in everything she did and still does, creating the well-known Missoni lifestyle. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, listening to what I'm going to say, which is uh, my life, uh, which, of course, for many years was devoted to fashion. Uh, I grew up uh, in a factory, uh, in a big family, in a patriarchal one. In the 30s, his factory was producing not only shawls and embroidered fabrics like my grandparents did, but also um, kimonos and pyjamas that the lady at that time used to go to the beach, for instance. And uh, so I, I was born in 1931, so those years, and I grew up among yarns, uh, silks, uh, um, pattern cutting, and my best game was to, do, to go and dig through the waste baskets and take pieces of cloth, which for me were treasures. So, uh, and in my grandparents' factory, there was everything from the dyeing uh, factory to the, the embroidery, to the pattern cutting, so it was really my school. And of course, fashion magazine from all over the world, which were my other school. And what Teresa called my aesthetics certainly grew up there. So when uh, I had a, a Education. I was educated in Italy, in a college of Swiss sisters. Of 
course, uh, languages were, was my choice, English and French. At the end of uh, uh, the three years uh, period of learning, I, I, we were sent, the whole uh, group of uh, pupils was sent to England. It was 1948, the year of Olympic Games. And uh, so I, I happened to, the sisters were very brilliant. They sent among the castles, the, the museums, uh, the galleries, the gardens, everything. We had one day at Wembley Stadium for the Olympic Games. And that day was the day which changed my life, because I saw Ottavio Missoni for the very first time competing in Wembley for, in the 400 meters hurdles. So I didn't know that a few days after I would have had the opportunity to meet him. Friends came, the president of his society, came to take him in college. And, uh, and we went to Brighton, and uh, I was, uh, we went to Victoria, I was on the train, I was looking to this fantastic guy in front of me. I was 16, I thought he was 21. He was 27. I said, <laughs> oh my God, I, it's out of my reach. <laughs> And then I started looking at him, and I saw he had started having already gray hair on his temples. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, we went there. When we came, I mean, to, to make it short, uh, I invited him for my 17th anniversary. He came uh, to, Gola, to Golaseca. He made a beautiful drawing in my... Uh, book of souvenirs, and uh, then maybe a year after, he came to spend some holiday in my village, always through his common friends, and, uh, and that was uh, what changed totally my life, because then in '53 we married, we, he had uh, started a small jo knitting job in Trieste, with a, a friend, and he was doing track and field uh, clothing, what now is called jogging uh, suits. And, uh, but Trieste was a place where it was easier to make a ship than to make a sweater. So since I was living and I was working in the factory of, of my parents and grandparents, uh, we decided we would have married and work in uh, my area. So we started in a, in a small basement of a, we had a hundred square meter apartment and a hundred square meter factory. Few years and then we immediately understood what would have been uh, our, uh, our work. The, at that time, uh, our label was uh, jolly, magnifico jolly. And uh, let's say in 1958, we have the chance to uh, deliver, a, a, to present our, it was not called collection, it was uh, our samples to uh, La Rinascente they make an order of 500 dresses, uh, shift dresses. They were, they made up a window, they call us, there is a window uh, with 18 uh, dresses, beautiful sketch by Brunetta, which was a fantastic illustrator. So we go down in the evening, my husband and me, and we watch our very first window full of our clothes. And the, 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 the stylist who had made up this window had put the girls, they were striped, uh, colorful dresses, with um, an handkerchief around their eyes, if, like if the girls were playing uh, blind man bluff. 
and we go there, it's 8 o'clock at night, it's the month of March, uh, cold in Milan. At 8 o'clock, we are looking at the window, and the man goes by, and he stares at the window, and he said, God bless, they made them blind because if they could see the way they look. This was the first compliment <laughs> we got. <laughs> but that was, uh, I mean, a blessing for our future because uh, from that moment uh, we started and we, did, we cheated when we delivered those 500. Instead of putting the label Jolly, we put a, a tiny little Missoni label. They were furious, they didn't want to have a, a name because it would have been easy to, to know where they had uh, got the, 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 the merchandise. But that was the, the way that it was so successful that they kept them. And, and that was the start of, of, uh, of we were quelli delle righe, the ones who make stripes, but then stripes, zigzags and, 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 and uh, checks and prints and then pattern on pattern till we, in, in 1970, we put everything together and we make a collection which was called the Put Together Collection by the New York Times, and it became our code. That was the way, we, and we, we still work, and now I am on the home um, collection, which I left fashion uh, at the end of uh, the 90s, 97, and um, because my life didn't belong anymore to that, it was, it, it was no more a pleasure to work, it was uh, a hard job, it was. Uh, so, uh, I was, my, my daughter was working in a factory, she grew up uh, and she was ready, she was making a collection on her own. I was using her uh, clothes and, and then I said, my God, when you are ready, please tell me because I want to step back. <laughs> So she came in, I walked out, and for a month I tried to, to, to play the grandmother. I had eight grandchildren, and uh, I was taking them to two or three days a week at the European school, but then after a while, uh, I was still going to the office every day, but checking, and um, of course, um, thanks and uh, all kind of notes, invitation and things were for me. And <laughs> I had also to do obituaries as usual, as, as, as I still do when it happens. And so uh, I, I said, no, my life cannot be like that. We had already a home collection done with my brothers, my, my, the, the old industry of my family, and uh, which was mainly bed, bath, and uh, rugs, and upholstery fabrics. But uh, it didn't have the punch I would have loved to, so I didn't, uh, I was, I no envy to put them in my home. So I said, I could do something with that, because for the home I always had a great passion. And uh, so I, I, I spoke to my children, and they said, Mama, if, uh, talk to your brother if they want you. <laughs> I'm quite tough when I work, when I, have, I defend my ideas. Uh, so they, uh, my brother agreed, my family agreed, and in 19, uh, 1997 we showed the first um, uh, home collection, and a couple of, uh, and we, we showed it also in Maison Objet, and the season after there were already copies around. So a copy is always uh, an homage. 
and it means uh, you you have uh, something interesting uh, and uh, so worth copying <laughs> and you have to step on and keep going and and that's uh, that's uh, always a challenge and it, it, this job uh, really keeps me alive keeps me young i go i keeps me with my open eyes i and and, and it's such a a joy to to uh, to have had such a life like i i have and and to to enjoy such a wonderful wonderful job the creative process of of uh, deciding every uh, the difference between fashion and the home is that things you make for the home are meant to last what you do for fashion it now it lasts for not even for weeks then it 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 goes out i mean and this is terrible this is really frustrating <laughs> you have to keep going one collection after the other it i mean i'm so glad that now i i, I my total devotion is for the home and the, and that keeps me alive young open eyed i i'm here in and, and you have such a beautiful country thank you for inviting me in daba because i'm really enjoying i i heard so many interesting people talking and and it's so fantastic to be here and who knows uh, my mm, head will go on and 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 leave and uh, and my brain is regenerated by this uh, opportunity to be here and and <laughs> also it is uh, Uh, way of of working uh, to have built our factory first of all we built it where we would have loved to spend our weekends and our children are there and our grandchildren are there too so this is uh, really a, something that that, that uh, maybe keeps me alive that uh, gives uh, uh, keeps people working on on uh, Uh, with pleasure with uh, a lightness uh, and we every then the other we have to celebrate something i will leave saturday certainly feeling me and reach the feeling me uh, and uh, who knows maybe i will continue for a hundred more years <laughs> hand Ms. thank Ms. you Rosita Missoni thank you very much Rosita <laughs>